morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into today's post show. My name is Josh. I'm joined by some wonderful people. Elizabeth, hopefully she doesn't get hit in the face of the microphone this week. Andy and hey. Darren. Hello. So Hello. what uh, What was one really cool thing that happened this week? Oh, yeah. It's like, no, I was repositioning. Oh. Um. Wow, we all had some lame weeks. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just, it was super, super busy. So I was just kind of, it's, it's a blur, but uh, Angie has been uh, helping out our friends uh, dog sitting. So I've been kind of home alone. So I binged the entire Netflix series Receiver yesterday and it was mm. great. Just sitting no down my way. basement. Yeah, we talked about it on the pre show. You kept trying to cut me off from re- reviewing it. Yeah. Well, you know. He's talk- further, you're further ahead of me. Uh, whenever I get caught up, I'll have to text you <laughs> yep. about all of it. So it's really good. We had a uh, trip over to St. Joe yesterday. Ooh. We went to the beach nice. with another million and a half Michiganders. <laughs> it was so warm. Who, Everybody's like, oh my go gosh. to the beach. It's like we all, everybody from the inland just <laughs> migrated <laughs> to the shore. Like, <laughs> everybody is here. I mean, we sat so close to the water. We're like, nobody ever sits in front of you here. And there were like two rows of people in front of us. Like, wow. That's crazy. Fit? But yeah. Crazy. So we did that. Wow, that's nice. crazy. Kids have fun. We had fun. I get irritated at the beach because sand gets everywhere. <laughs> yeah. and I, know I'm br- beach, I know I'm bringing it home with me. The pool was superior. Far superior. The pool yeah. was very much superior. I get claustrophobic at the beach. Too many people. Just, yeah. I can see that. Elizabeth? <laughs> 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 We like talked about the beach as much as we talked about bowling. I know. We? Uh, a lot about bowling. Yes. Um, I. Oh, I am proud to say I am now a professional golfer. Hey. My grandpa sitting right over there taught me how to golf, and I am like a professional. Okay, I just, I just want to point out right when you said professional golfer, your grandpa started laughing. Oh, I know. <laughs> Immediately I know. the second that you said. That. Okay, you know. Okay. <laughs> we. Carrie, does she have a slice? What is a slice? <laughs> oh, I know what a slice. Slice of pizza. She hasn't yeah. developed that yet. Um, it's not a slice of pizza. It's when you mess up your tee shot really bad. <laughs> okay. Slice it or into any the shot. Or any, oh. or any yeah. shot. Typically the well, tee shot. I haven't seen anyone slice a putt. No, I'm really good. What'd you shoot? We didn't, Two. Of course, we didn't keep score. <laughs> <laughs> did you go to a driving range or did you play yes. on a course? The driving range. The dri- I'm starting okay, slow, range. guys. Starting, starting slow. slow. Hey, that's but the I best am already a professional. Okay, of course you are. Yeah. Although my grandma, <laughs> she goes, wow, I can't believe you actually hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> How encouraging. I know. Like, it was, it was funny. But I was like, grandma, I did miss a couple times, but I did hit the ball <laughs> more times than I missed. Okay. So that's, I'm professional. That's a good start. <laughs> this is a really good start. Yeah. Um, it reminds me, I gotta get my driver regripped. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. You're so uh, welcome. The highlight for me last night, my mom and my stepdad got into town. Hey, nice. So nice. that was cool. We got to go out to 600 Kitchen, one of my favorite restaurants. So oh, that nice. was fun. My mom is gonna be staying with Chelsea when I go to summer camp tomorrow. Oh, cool. So yeah. my whole week was pretty much spent endless hours on summer camp. Yeah. Summer Make sure everything is ready to go. All right, let's go ahead. Let's hop into the first question. What stood out to you in Pastor Perry's message today? Pastor what was Perry. something that jumped out to you? That picture of him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that picture yeah. was crazy. He had hair. I know. I was he like, had hair. Let me pull up my notes. I was like, Dwight's got hair? <laughs> Dwight. <laughs> it's his legal name, Dwight. In case um, you know. The thing that, that's, that stood out to me, and it, because it, I mean, it was, uh, I was talking about at God's pace, and I was just like, yeah, but sometimes I don't like God's pace because <laughs> it's not the pace I want. But I, when you sit back and realize, like, okay, everything's meant to happen this way, but it's like it's good to be reminded of that because yeah. we get so caught up in our own things, and it's like if it's not at my time, then it's not clearly it's not what God wants. It's like no, it's God's time, and I have to wait for that. So, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Me? Yeah, go. Okay. <laughs> so I would probably second that because that kind of stood out to me, um, especially this. Uh, I don't know, just this season in my life, I've been looking more at the bad things that happen and why the bad things happen. And I've noticed a lot of times where I'm like, oh, this, this, this thing happened that I don't like. And more I'm like, but it prepared me for something. You know, I was, I was not wanting to do this, but I had to do this at work. And like, actually it helped stretch my back out for what I was going to do later. And like got 
you know, that was one of those negative things that I thought, oh, this, this day is just going to be terrible. Mm -hmm. And like, I could see where that was a preparation for something. And, um, even we had kind of talked through that in our small group with, uh, Jesus warning the Sadducees of the fall of the temple, right? And they're, you know, and the, the coming, the coming fall that Rome's going to destroy you. And, you know, they're, they're like, well, why did this have to happen to us? He's like, because you were disobedient. And that's, you know, that's going to be part of your story. Now you have to go through this. This is going to happen. And you're not going to get out of it. So <laughs> there's a no reason how things happen. Try, right. It's happening. Yeah. Oh. Sure. That's awesome. Elizabeth. Um, I would say it was kind of in like his wrap up of everything. It was just the last sentence. Um, it says, it may be uncomfortable to trust God and go at his pace, but the blessings will be worth it. And I feel like that's just something that I really needed to hear. Mm -hmm. Just in like kind of a season of just like changing, but also like waiting for different opportunities to be available and to actually be able to, I don't know, move on from certain things. Because I felt very like, okay, like what are like what are we waiting for? Like, let's go, come on! Like, I want something to do. I want, and I don't know. So I feel like that's just like I've gotten kind of to the point where I'm like starting to be like, okay, I'm a little uncomfortable, but it'll be worth it to just trust and be like, God's got me, and I'll be better in the long run. Yeah, I think what stood out to me, and whenever I hear the story of the Exodus. It always just blows my mind, like what the Israelites, like okay, they experienced God mm -hmm. in this way in the parting of the sea, and or from the plagues first, and then the parting of the sea, and then the manna, and then mm -hmm. the quail, and they just keep going. I want to go back to Egypt. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. how you yeah. experience God every day, and then I look internally on myself and go, I also experience God every single day, and I still want to go back to X or still have desires of Y. And I'm like, I relate to the Israelites so much more than yeah. I could ever imagine. Every time I hear it, I always am like, oh, I'm glad I'm not one of them. And then I realize, oh, no, I, I am one of them. Yeah, I we, all, we all are one of them um, in one way or another. So it was kind of a, a humbling message, I guess, to put it that yeah. way. Of yeah. Just a reminder of like, I'm not much better than these these people here, I see the blessings of God every day and I still struggle with certain things um, I shouldn't be struggling with. Yep. So, when you look at the story of the Exodus, kind of dive a little bit more into it, what is one thing that stands out to you? So, Pastor Perry was jumping through, starting in, uh, obviously, the book of Exodus, going through the book of Numbers and just certain parts of the story. Um, whenever you look at that story as a whole, what stands out to you personally? I mean, Honestly, what you just said, mm -hmm. there are times where I'm just like, uh, I've never seen waters part. I've never seen manna just there in the morning or stuff fall from heaven. And it'd be so easy for me to sit back here now and go, duh, like, you know, you're God's there. You see it every day yeah. and you're still complaining and grumbling like yeah. seriously. And then to think about it, you're like, yes, I ex experience God in different ways. It's just mm -hmm. not water's parting this mm -hmm. or that and I still do the same thing. Okay. So, yeah. but that's the biggest thing to me because I'm like, look, it's really easy for me to sit here and say I experience God every day, but I also can't say that, hey, remember last week when he parted the water? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go back to Egypt. Like I can't see myself doing this. So, <laughs> maybe he'll part the water again yeah. for us and, to and we can through. go back. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that yeah. delicious food was just laying in the desert. Yeah. Or to then complain about it, be like, right. man, we've got quail again. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they complained about the manna, so God yeah. said, here's quail. quail. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, no. Every no, we did quail too many times. Yeah, every yeah. day. You didn't have to worry about making food. It just yeah. fell from the sky. That's yeah. great. It's like cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Like there cloudy <laughs> cloudy with a chance of manna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think another thing that stands out for me is when Moses is on the time of Mount Sinai, like, we know that there's the big cloud that God is in, the pillar of fire and everything. And Joshua, if you, if you read through the story more, he's sitting at the base of the mountain. And he hears the camp when the camp is making the golden calf. Which, by the way, from where the camp was, they could have looked up at the mountain <laughs> and still have seen the pillar of fire where God obviously was. 
but they still were so impatient that they wanted to make a golden calf. And when Moses comes down, Joshua tells him, "Hey, I hear, I hear, uh, like sounds of like these these crying and these chants all this from the camp, but I know it's not a sound of war." So Joshua is doesn't he's completely out of the picture of this. He's like, "Something's happening there. Something's happening up here, and I'm sitting right here." And it it, it just it blows my mind how he sits in that spot. And he stays so faithful to what God's called, even though there's something going on at the camp and he doesn't know what it is, but he knows what his job is, is to stay at the bottom of this mountain waiting for Moses to come down. Yeah. Knowing that something is going on in the camp, but he stays there <laughs> because this is what Moses told him to do and he knows that Moses is with God. So even in the midst of the craziness and the lack of faith by the Israelites in that moment when, again, they literally could have just looked at the top of the mountain and seen God right there. Um, how Joshua stayed faithful in that time. He's like, I'm supposed to be here. I'm going to stay right here because this is what God told me to do through Moses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be impossible. I know me, I'd be like, what's, what's going on over there? I'm like, Why are they chanting? What are maybe they Maybe I should just go over there and check. <laughs> <laughs> nope, he stayed right there at the foot of the mountain. Yep. So, anybody got anything else to add to that one? I feel like, I mean, obviously the most, the thing that stands out to me most about the Exodus is just the time frame, right? Like, mm -hmm. 40 years is a long time. And how many times have I asked God for direction and I get impatient when it's two days, yeah. right? 40 years. Two days, dude. Two hours sometimes. Two hours, I'm like, yeah. come on, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I know, moment. right? Like, we <laughs> just have such a short span of patience now with God. I think with everything. And, and you know, our phones don't help. You oh, know, yeah. all the connected stuff doesn't help. But um, it's a good reminder when you go through those stories. Like, yeah, sometimes God takes a while to answer your your prayers yeah. and to show you things to show you direction and you have to again you have to be happy with where you're at and even if it's a bad you know bad moment in your life yeah. you're there's a reason you're going through this suffering or this pain or this this trial um and it's it's our job as christians to learn what we can learn from that experience instead of just fighting it all the time and you know feeling like we're suffering through it we need to look for those opportunities to yeah. grow and learn so yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. to to piggyback off of what you said about impatience how can we combat impatience with us <laughs> how can we analyze ourselves <laughs> well it's been 44 years and i'm still <laughs> analyzing it uh, once i figure it out i'll come back and let you know <laughs> you can write a book yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you figure out how to deal with impatience write a write book, book. <laughs> and nobody will read it because they'll be impatient with how i how i lay it out because i'll wait till the very end to tell you <laughs> <laughs> 250 pages the only pages that matter the last um, time. I do think, in, in, in joking about being older, though, as you get older, certain things you've experienced. Yeah. Once you have kids, that helps with your patience a lot. Oh, absolutely. Because you're yeah. like, all right, now I, now I see what my parents were going through, yeah. and now I see what my grandparents and all this stuff. So I just think being honest or being just focusing on what's happening around you and as you grow, learning things does help with your patience. And you do have to be very methodical about mm -hmm. it. You have to say, all right, certain things I'm not going to let get yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. And you have to practice it because it's just like mm -hmm. anything For sure. in life. But just life is the big thing because as you get older, some things you learn to take patience. Mm -hmm. I'll just reiterate, I just, I've, I've been trying to remind myself more to look around and see what I can learn from that situation. You know, yeah. what, is it a possible preparation? You know, sometimes I, the, I've, I heard a story, and it might just be a made-up story, but um, of a, a person who was in a, you know, in a bunch of traffic, and they were like, yeah, you know, I was just really frustrated that morning, and I was like five minutes behind, and so I took an alternate route, and then that day, that same, the time where I would have been on the highway, there was like a 50-car pileup, and there was a bunch of, you know, people that passed away in that, and I would have been there, or, you know, the 9-11 stories huge you know i missed the bus that morning yep. and i was all frustrated and then like hey god had a reason for that mm. <laughs> you yeah. know so uh i think a big one and we, we kind of we talked about this the past few weeks uh, on the post show is taking a step back from the situation you're in and looking at the blessings of right now like yeah. it can be so easy to go uh, for example my wife had just been pregnant for nine months. We just had a baby a few weeks ago. When in the process of, of the pregnancy, like going, man, I'm just ready for the baby here. I'm just ready for the baby to be here. And not 
enjoying the blessings of the season of, man, this is the last time it's going to be just us two. Let's take advantage of that and rushing out with impatience. But when we took a step back more towards the end of it, we were like, man, we've kind of like almost wasted away these first few months because we've been spending so like, oh, I can't wait for the baby here. I can't like, is it, is it good to be excited for those things sometimes? You know, sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to just be so focused on that, that we're not enjoying the present moment. So I think if we take a step back in our situations that we're trying to rush through and go, man, what is God teaching me now? What is the blessings that's coming from mm -hmm. this right yeah. now? Um, that that would be game changing in yeah. our walk. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I feel like I really struggle with that, especially if I know that something is going to change or that something is like coming up that's big. Like I will just like almost hyper fixate on that. And just, like, work myself up to a point where, like, I try to fix it all or do everything I can right now instead of just, like, knowing that everything, like, like once I get there, I'll be able to, like, actually work through it. Because I do really bad with change. <laughs> like, I struggle so bad with just being okay with things changing because I like, I like when things are, like, lined up and, like, I'm super, like... My mom makes fun of my room because it's like I literally she's like it looks like a magazine like someone's about to come take a picture of it. But like if <laughs> yeah. something is moved like I go and I fix it because it's just like there's something in my brain that's so like I just like it when things are like lined up. I know where they are. I know yada yada yada. And so change really freaks me out. And so if I know something is changing or like something is coming like especially if someone's moving. Like, that's a big thing for me, like, right now. Like, it's just, like, knowing that that's coming and just knowing that, like, I can't do anything about it right now. But I also, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's a hard thing for me to take a step back and really be like, okay, like, that's not happening right this second. It's okay to just yeah. let that be, like, pushed to the side for a second. It's been really hard, but I've been trying to work on it. Because I get very like if I think about too many things sure. all at once, and no one needs me like. <laughs> and guess what? Sometimes when some people are moving, it's a good thing <laughs> for them and for uh, for us. So yeah, it's just the way God is planning things out. So mm -hmm. as I've gotten older, when I was younger, I didn't like change. Now that I'm a lot yeah. older, I'm like change happens every day. So I'm I yeah. like work. People go like got to get you know some people resist change and i've seen how that can negatively impact things so that's helped me too along yeah. the last few years so it's like yeah it stinks and it's not great but it's also for a particular reason and mm -hmm. the one who's in ultimate control knows a lot better than i do so i've learned to just kind of go with it yeah. i think it's encouraging too because you see examples in scripture of that where mm -hmm. you know jesus is like hey i'm bringing this new system and everyone's like we don't want change. We, you know, we like the system we had. Why yeah. are you changing things? Like, don't, don't teach them that. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, he was the oh, ultimate yeah. right. bringer of change. Right. Yep. No. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I know we got a couple of people that I have to go rock our socks we'll off here in a minute. Yeah. In just a second. So everybody that joined in for our post show today, uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions at all about maybe anything you heard in today's message or something that you come across while you're reading your Bible, you can go to my3c.org to the submit a question tab. You can put it on there, totally anonymous. And our goal is to answer that question on one of our future Q&As. We have our Q&A every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. So I highly encourage you to join in on that. There's a lot of great information. You can also go back and listen to the 40 others that I think, all right, there's probably not that many. But <laughs> however many we've done up to this point. There's probably been close. Close maybe there's the like 40, however many there's yeah. But you can go back and you can listen to those. I highly yeah. encourage you to do so. Again, any questions, my3c.org, go to submit a question tab, go answer or ask a question there, and we will answer it in one of our future Q&As. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you have a great day. Uh, we here at Connections love you, but most importantly, Jesus loves you. See you guys. <laughs>